Tonight on Cronkite News, election season is coming to a close. We take a look at if Trump or Biden will take Arizona's electoral votes. And how young voters took the lead in this election cycle. And on Break It Down, how COVID-19 has changed the sports fan experience. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Kelsey Clacy. And I'm Mike Ligubi. Thank you for joining us. The votes are in. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has won Arizona's electoral votes. There is much debate over Biden's approaching victory in Arizona. Arizona is traditionally a red state, and it has not voted for a Democratic presidential nominee since Clinton in 1996. But that changed this year, and all of Arizona's 11 electoral college votes are expected to go to Biden. The remaining uncounted ballots in Arizona are not enough for the president to win. And because of that, the Trump campaign dropped its lawsuit against the Secretary of State and the Maricopa County Recorder. Late Arizona Senator John McCain's wife, Cindy McCain, is excited about Arizona's support for Joe Biden. Have a listen. I think that his, his standards, his values, his, the things that, he's, that he, he works for, working together, working across the aisle, making sure that he does things not for himself, but for the good of the country. Those are the values that he's always had. And I look forward to watching him and participating in this uh, down the line. We're, we're just so excited here in Arizona. Cindy McCain says her husband, even as a Republican, would have wanted Joe Biden to be recognized and supported as president-elect. Cindy McCain supported Biden during his presidential race and is part of Biden's transition team. It's all over but the shouting, as the expression goes, and in Washington, they're still shouting. With pro-Trump rallies planned tomorrow, Carolina Hassett reports from our Washington bureau. The plaza behind me may be empty now, but tomorrow it will be filled with supporters for President Donald Trump. And a scene that looks something like this. This was a scene today at Black Lives Matter Plaza just north of the White House. It was just a week ago that this plaza was filled with jubilant backers of President-elect Joe Biden. This weekend, the MAGA crowd will take its turn, although no one is exactly sure how many will show up or where. President Donald Trump's supporters say it's important to back his claims of voting irregularity. We feel like our votes don't count um, because the, there are many illegal votes being counted. Election officials in Arizona and elsewhere have repeatedly rejected such claims, calling this one of the cleanest elections they have seen. But Kramer doesn't see it that way. If we allow this to happen now, we will not have a free and fair election moving forward. Women for America First is just one of the groups expected to be at Freedom Plaza tomorrow. Some of those groups are known for leaving violent confrontations in their wake. But Kramer is not concerned about violence. We're not worried about it. Our supporters are not worried about it. And we are going to be out on Saturday come rain or shine. Biden supporters we spoke to said they are worried about violence from the other side, but said they plan to show up anyway to make their voices heard. According to the Metropolitan Police Department, there have been no permit requests for this event, but they're still preparing for First Amendment activities. In Washington, Carolina Hassett, Cronkite News. The Department of Homeland Security says the 2020 election was the most secure in American history. In a statement, the DHS said there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. Chris Krebs, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity, and Infrastructure Security Agency, is urging U.S. voters to believe in the nation's voting system. Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs told CNN yesterday she is happy with how the count has worked here. It's been a long, a, a prolonged vote count, but really we're ahead of where we were this time two years ago. Uh, so I think we, uh, with record turnout, um, more votes than we've ever had to tabulate, uh, we did pretty well. But not everyone agrees. The Arizona Republican Party filed a lawsuit yesterday challenging how the election count sampling is being handled. In the latest election procedure manual, there is a provision allowing counties to do a hand count audit of ballots by vote centers instead of precincts. This year, Maricopa County allowed voters to cast their ballots at voting centers 
instead of requiring them to go to their precinct. The Arizona Republican Party's lawsuit claims doing the hand count in voting centers will not be as accurate. The audit is used to ensure all of the machines are accurately counting the votes and should be done in at least 15 precincts in Maricopa County. That sampling is set to start as soon as the ballot count is over. Republican Martha McSally conceded to Democrat Mark Kelly this afternoon. He will be Arizona's second Democratic senator in Congress. There will not be an automatic recount here in Arizona. There's simply no provision in state statute that allows for a recount that fall for a margin that falls outside of the trigger of 200 votes. And we're, we're certainly not going to hit that in this election. So, so no, there's no um, contemplation of a recount here. The last time there was a recount here in Arizona was in 2016. Andy Biggs won the Republican nomination for Congress over Christine Jones and was within the 200 vote margin. A recount ended up adding votes to his tally. There were a lot of record highs and unique situations in this election cycle, but one that has definitely left its mark, youth turnout. Our Los Angeles Cronkite News reporter, Patty Vicente, talks to youth voters, poll workers, and organizers across the Southwest. When first-time voter Yesenia Ramirez Garcia received her ballot, the Goleta, California resident was quick to return it. It was a day she looked forward to since turning 18 this year. Now she works to motivate others to vote. We take voting as like our power. You know, we recognize that that is something that we can do to make change in this country. Many older volunteers couldn't work at the polls this year due to the threat of COVID-19. So young volunteers answered the call. Experts hope their participation will lead to a new generation of poll workers. President and CEO of Fair Election Center, Robert Brandon, says those volunteers are vital, especially when voter turnout is high. Well, we're going to have a much different generation of poll workers going forward, a younger group, a more diverse group. They're going to look more like the voters they try to help and a more technologically savvy group because young people are much more facile when it comes to the changing technology that voting is encompassing these days. Researchers at Tufts University say in Arizona, 17 percent of voters were between the ages of 18 and 29 in 2020. 18 year old Ethan Vandevin from Lich Field Park says voting is all about doing your part. We need to vote so we can get who we want in office and hopefully move the country forward. Beyond exercising the right to vote, advocates like Pomona native Arlene Alonzo want to educate communities. Voting it's just one tool. You know, we have many tools, we have many resources. However, to make the changes that we'd want to make, we need to come together as a community. We need to go ahead and have each other's back in a sense. In Los Angeles, Patty Vicente, Cronkite News. Arizona has continued to see increases in COVID-19 cases. The Arizona Department of Health Services has reported over 250,000 COVID cases in the state. When Cronkite News returns, we'll talk about the impact of COVID-19 on Arizona and how you can get a free COVID test. Plus, how the National Guard is providing relief during the COVID-19 pandemic. Don't go away. This is the inside story of the world's favorite way to travel. This is how the other half live. Whether by private jet. It makes him terribly glamorous. We were flying the Princess of Wales. We dropped 10,000 feet. We just dropped. Or Her Majesty's Palace on Wheels. It was very lavish. It was very stylish. It was a masterpiece of Art Deco design. Join us for the most exclusive commute in the world. All new, Sunday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. COVID-19 cases in Arizona have continued to climb. Just today, there are over 3,000 new cases reported and 17 deaths in Arizona, according to the Arizona Department of Health Services. The AZDHS also reports that men are more likely to die from the virus compared to women. And in Arizona, 43% of the deaths are white individuals, followed closely by 30% of the deaths being Hispanic or Latino individuals. To date, the county reporting the most COVID-related deaths is Maricopa County. The Arizona National Guard has taken on extra duties during the pandemic. As Cronkite News reporter Nicole Long shows us, recently service members scattered across the state 
to provide COVID-19 relief to local communities. The Arizona National Guard has activated more than 800 Arizona citizen soldiers and airmen to aid communities throughout the state that are in need of aid due to COVID. At a local food distribution center in Tonopah, service members prepared and delivered carts of groceries for residents. The primary duties are food banks, food supply distribution, so think trucking, excess food from manufacturers or suppliers to food banks, as well as uh, movement of those supplies to counties and tribal nations. In Phoenix, service members prepared, collected, and transported COVID-19 test samples from State of Arizona employees at the Arizona Department of Administration. More than 200 Army and Air National Guard medics are teaching communities about COVID-19 testing and prevention. And their primary lines of effort throughout this entire uh, deal has been to teach communities and community health centers about testing, how to do testing, how to administer testing, how to properly use PPE to prevent spread of COVID-19, and do a lot of teach and train events. Nicole Long, Cronkite News. The National Guard has been spread out across Arizona since March and will continue with COVID-19 relief as long as it is necessary. Arizona State University and the Arizona Department of Health Services are providing free COVID-19 saliva testing in high need and underserved communities in Arizona. Testing is currently available at over 500 locations across the state, including in Mesa, Flagstaff, Tucson, and Glendale. The tests are available by appointment only and are not available for children under five years old. To schedule a test, go to azdhs.gov. With COVID cases surging around the country, the ASU Sun Devil football team canceled their game this weekend against the California Bears after several student athletes and head coach Herm Edwards tested positive for the virus. Emiliano Fergosa has more on this development and where the Sun Devils go from here. ASU football canceled Saturday's game against Cal Friday morning in light of head coach Herm Edwards and several others testing positive for COVID-19. ASU and Edwards issued a statement shortly after the announcement. Even with the marvelous care our medical professionals have provided for myself, my staff, and my team over the past few months, the virus still found me. So I encourage all of you to take this virus seriously, to wear a mask, to practice physical distancing, and to get tested whenever possible. As I've stated many times over, the health, safety, and well-being of our student athletes is absolutely paramount and we will not put them at risk, wrote Edwards. And with Saturday's game being canceled, this marks the 13th COVID-related cancellation this week for college football and the 60th overall. ASU will look ahead to their next game on November 21st when they take on the Colorado Buffaloes. Emiliano Fergoso, Cronkite News. When Cronkite News comes back, the innovative way Sun Devils are adapting to sports during COVID-19. Cutouts. That's right, ASU is not letting their school spirit drop. Cutouts of fans will be placed in the Sun Devil Stadium to cheer on Arizona State University athletes. More on this story when we come back. On the trouble with Maggie Cole. And all this time, you and him with this secret between you. I destroyed a man's life, Becca. It was an accident. I wish you told me. I'm going to go away. Where are you going? The truth is, I'm not a person you think I am. Kelly Alex is here. He says that money you found, he says it was his. Mummy? Josh? Where is my money, Kelly? All new, Sunday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. Schools across Arizona are reevaluating if it's safe to allow students to participate in activities such as sports. In Phoenix, a decision has been made. The Phoenix Union High School District has announced that it will end fall sports and will delay the start of winter sports like basketball and wrestling. The school district says that they will not open until it's safe, responsible, and reasonable to do so. With the rise in COVID-19 cases in Arizona, it is not safe to return anytime soon. Academic classes are currently being held online for the school district. The school district is made up of over 20 high schools.
This season for ASU football, when the team takes the field again, the stadium will be filled with some family and friends, but mostly cardboard. Cronkite News reporter Reed Harmon takes a deeper cut into what to expect in the stands this season. The stands will be limited to invited family and friends at Sun Devil Stadium this season, but cardboard cutout versions of fans will be able to take a seat at the game. For $40 for faculty and season ticket holders and 50 bucks for everybody else, you can grab your favorite drink and chill on your couch and maybe catch yourself at the game on TV. We were blown away by the response. You know, like I said, we, we kind of predicted it would be a good response based on what we'd seen with professional leagues. Uh, but we were, we were still um, surprised by just how excited people were about it. And, um, and it's really a lot of fun to see them come in and see the different things people are doing. Sun Double Athletics noticed they could get this done in-house instead of a third-party company. So they are collaborating with the ASU Print Lab to make a limited number of fan cutouts. While this is not something that specifically they've ever done before, um, they were really excited about trying to use their capabilities to help, uh, to help us out. And so they innovated an entire uh, platform for us to do this in-house. So now what we're able to do is when people are paying for these fan cutouts, we're not having to take any of the money from it and send it off to another company to pay for the production. We're able to keep all that at ASU uh, and, and that way use the money to, to help support our student athletes and then just pay the cost of the print lab. So we were really excited about how that came together. The proceeds will go directly towards the Sun Devil Athletic Department and the cutout craze might go beyond football as well. We do have plans to launch this uh, after the first football game for the Desert Financial Arena as well. Uh, with that, what we'll do as opposed to making it just a basketball one, we'll, we'll, we'll go to every sport that plays in Desert Financial, so volleyball, wrestling, gymnastics, and we'll just put them in there. That way we can just have them, the, the, the cutout will be there for, the, for every season. The process has been nonstop for the print lab trying to put butts, I mean faces, in seats. We started selling them, you know, we're probably almost close to a thousand for fans and a thousand for students. So they're just producing them all day and then they, they send them over to us in big pallets uh, and then we go and install them into the stadium. The cutouts will make their debut at Sun Devil Stadium this Saturday when ASU hosts Cal. Reed Harmon, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.